Hello, school council. My name is Nick Mitchell, and I am Dundas Valley's student body prime minister. You've probably heard both good and bad things about me. Hopefully more good than bad. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not able to attend today's meeting, um, just due to my scheduling at work, but hopefully I'll be able to attend some future meetings. And my vice, Abby Lewis, was not able to attend today, but she might be attending some future meetings as well. So I'm just going to update you guys by this video as to what student council has been up to and what we're planning to do in the future. So sit back and get comfortable because it's going to be a thrilling five minutes. Okay. Um, what have we been up to? We, we made a website um, where kids can go and they can see all the events that student council has planned. Uh, they can also send us an email uh, anonymously, and it just goes to the members of uh, student council. It doesn't go to any of the staff, which I think helps kids get a little more uh, honest about what they write. Uh, and they can th it's meant that they can go and basically give feedback on events that we have planned. Uh, we're, one of the things we're trying to do is run our ideas by the students before we go ahead and plan them, because I think in past years student council would you know, plan a spirit day of sorts, or a buy-in, or buy-out, and then students just wouldn't go because they weren't really that into it. But this way, we actually get to, you know, run ideas by kids, and then if they like it, then we do it, and if they don't, then, of course, we're not going to go through with it. Uh, also on the website, we have all the student council's finances posted. Uh, so it's an open book type system where every single cent we make or lose uh, our budgets for things, so that's what we have posted there. If you want to give it a look, uh, just ask Del Sordo. I'm sure he can give you the link to that. Um, other things that we've done so far, uh, I gave a couple speeches to the seniors and the juniors, uh, <laughs> just about things they need to hear about life, and I, I think that went over, that went pretty well with them. Um, we also we put in a ping pong table in the cafeteria, which has been a huge hit because I think kids got really bored of just sitting around at lunch and doing nothing. So kids have been coming in early to play. They play it during lunch. They play it during their spare. A lot of kids stay after school for a couple hours, and they have a tournament of ping pong, which has been great. Uh, Nancy Watt, if you're there, hello. Uh, Nancy has generously uh, offered to donate her own ping pong table so we can have another one in there, which would be a huge help because there's always like 30 kids surrounded the one ping pong table waiting for their turn to play, so that would be fantastic. Uh, we also we hooked up a Wii to the main Fourier TV for a couple days, which was a lot of fun. Kids kids got to play that. Uh, we'd like to move it permanently. There's a TV in the cafeteria, which we'd like to hook it up to, um, but they put it too close to the wall, so we can't hook it up for now. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, so that's one of the things we're trying to do. Uh, in general, our main goal for this year is just improving school spirit. Because I think, as we all know, the transition between Parkside and Highland, the amalgamation, and everyone coming to a new renovated school really took a toll on the students. Um, last year, there was just a complete, complete and utter lack of, of school spirit. A lot of kids just didn't want to be there and they were unhappy. And and the, uh, the idea of doing, you know, one fun event every couple months is better than nothing, but it, it doesn't really last. So what we're trying to do is have at least something for everybody once a week. We want to have one fun event every single week, which so far we've been able to keep up our promise to. Um, a couple of weeks ago we had the first Dundas Valley Hunger Games, which was a lot of fun to both participate and watch. Uh, you can ask Del Sordo about that. I'm sure he could tell you some good stories about that. Um, this upcoming Halloween we're going to have a murder mystery where we're going to kill the kill our school mascot, the Griffin, and we're going to stage a crime scene, and there's going to be clues scattered around, and then kids have to go and follow the trail of clues throughout the school, and then they have to go and accuse uh, who they think the murderer is, and, you know, they'll win, like, a gift card or something, and that'll take as long as it needs to, a week, a day, however long it takes people. Um, Long-term goals, we are going to plan three dances, three dances, so we're going to have one formal early December, and then we're going to have uh, another formal uh, in the spring. And then those are both outside of the school, usually at Carmen's or Michelangelo's. 
Uh, and then during February at Valentine's Day, we're going to have an actual dance at the school just to generate a lot of profit and boost our funds for uh, the following spring form so we can kind of bump it up a bit. Um, what else? Uh, oh, me and Del Sordo have been chatting about there's a gift. Uh, I think every year student council is responsible for buying a gift for the graduating students and last year they forgot to do that so that means that we are now carrying over uh, carrying over the thousand dollars that they usually spend on a gift for this year so we are either going to combine that thousand dollars with this year's thousand dollars meaning we have two grand for a gift to spend on or we're just going to buy another gift from last year. Del Sordo had mentioned uh, that there's possibly getting some Muskoka chairs or some uh, bit more benches for the school, which I think kids would use to an extent, but they'd have a lot more fun, and and of course we'll run this by them, by the PA, and then they can go on our website and give us feedback, but I think if we bought something like, um, something everyone could use, you know, like a foosball table or an air hockey table, something with, you know, a little less practical to use, but uh, something a little bit more fun, so that's one thing. Um, what else, what else, I think that's it right now. Oh, one other thing. Uh, there's been some debate between, between me and, and there's this other kid in, in my class, and, and he said that the newest karate kid, the one with Jaden Smith, right, and Jackie Chan, he said that was better than the original, but I personally think the original was so, so much better. Now, his argument was that the one with Jaden Smith had better fighting, which I agree. But in the final fight between Jaden Smith and the kid, he, he does a backflip, right, and kicks the guy in the face and knocks him out. Obviously, he was wearing wires for that, so that's one thing. And the original Karate Kid, there were no special effects. It was just pure choreographed fighting, right? He didn't have any... Uh, he wasn't wearing a wire. He, they didn't, you know, animate any of his any of his moves. You know, it was pure karate, right, the entire time. Whereas in the new Jane Smith, it looks a lot flashier, but it's totally impractical. And my other thing is that Jane Smith learned how to do all that in like three months, right? He has three months for the tournament, and then he learns how to do a backflip and knock a kid out, right? And now I'm not saying that the original Karate Kid was any more plausible, right? I mean, Mr. Miyagi got him waxing cars for like, uh, I don't know, three weeks or something, and that somehow was able able to teach him, you know, karate, I guess patience or something, but that doesn't apply to when a guy's trying to, you know, punch you in the face, but he still won. The point is not just the fighting, but the original Karate Kid actually, you know, the, the real story was that it's a city boy, that comes, you know, to a new place, and he's not just defending his own honor through karate, but he's defending the people that he loves most, you know, his his family and his sensei, Mr. Miyagi, which also bothered me that in the new Karate Kid, they didn't even bother carrying over the original names, right? Danielson was the name of, um, oh, what was the actor? Ralph Macchio, right, who played the lead character, and then Mr. Miyagi was his sensei, right? Now, I respect Jackie Chan, who played the new guy, in the new Jane Smith movie, but his name was Mr. Han, right? Not Mr. Miyagi, Mr. Han, right? I, I don't know, that just really bothered me. I respect Jackie Chan, I think he's a good martial artist and all, but it, it just seemed over the top, right? Like, there was no need, the original Karate Kid was good as it was, there was no need to make it anything more than it already has been, right? But for some reason, the director felt compelled to make another karate kid which i just don't understand and that's another thing it wasn't even karate that's right and the new one mr han teaches him kung fu he doesn't say karate once it should have been the kung fu kid but they said karate kid because they just wanted to piggyback on the original fame and how classic the original movie was with ralph macchio proving that it was a better film all along right because why else would they call it the Karate Kid? Because you're like, oh, the Karate Kid, that original one with Ralph Macchio was so good, it must be that good. And they didn't even use karate, it was Kung Fu the entire time. And they just, they did not capture the story, right? Like his struggle at the end, right? Like he, they break 
Daniel Sun's leg, and then he does the crane kick and knocks the guy out, right? And and he was hopping on one leg, like he did the crane kick because he couldn't support any weight on his leg, right? He had broken his shin because the guy, you know, sweeped his leg. That was the famous line, you know, sweep his leg. And the new one with Jaden Smith, the, you know, he breaks his leg and then Mr. Han just does the balls and cups and fire on his leg and then that's it. There's no more pain, right? And he's able to put pressure on it, does the backflip and knocks the kid out, which I think is just totally insane. I mean, there is something very intimate about fighting. Uh, I mean, <laughs> imagine if we applied that today, right? Imagine if instead of presidential debates, you had president, presidential fights, right? Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton going at it. I honestly don't know who would win. I mean, Donald Trump is taller, but he doesn't seem like he's in great shape. I mean, I know Hillary Clinton has pneumonia and all that, and she's supposed to be not in shape as well, but I mean, Donald Trump is like a heavy set guy. I mean, I feel like if he was able to get Hillary Clinton, then that would kind of be it. That would be the end of the fight. But Hillary Clinton is, you know, she's a sneaky, she's a sneaky woman. She could probably bob and weave. And she usually wears a ring, too. Well, it depends if this is a street fight or, like, a regulated in the octagon fight, right? I mean, if she had her rings on, she'd probably scrape Donald Trump, scrape his, you know, spray tan off of his face, and then that would defeat his self-image, and then he wouldn't be able to keep up his guard, and then and then she would get in. I don't know. It, well, okay, well, if it's karate, they're both screwed because none of them know karate. If it's boxing, if it's boxing, I'd have to give it to Donald Trump just because he has the reach. He's a taller guy. But if it was MMA, like if you threw them in the octagon, I would have to go, yeah, I'd have to go with Hillary Clinton just because I feel like she'd outrun him. Donald Trump would get too cocky, keep his guard down, right? And then Hillary Clinton would run up, take him by the legs, and probably choke him out. I feel like, I feel like she could do that. Anyhow, anyhow, I'm rambling. Uh, that's all I have for today. Uh, hopefully I'll see you guys next time. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Uh, just ask Del Sordo for it. He'll give it to you, no problem. Um, you can contact me anytime you want. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.